What's up, students? Hope you're having the best day of your life today. Today, I want to talk about the force due to gravity and weight and how they're similar, how they're not really different. Go over the law of gravitation, the difference between weight and mass, which gets confused a lot when it comes to this, the difference between the force due to gravity and little g. That's also very confusing for students. This is going to be good for anybody taking the SAT physics exam, the AP Physics 1 or C, not so much AP Physics 2, doesn't really come up that much with gravity, and the New York State Reads exam if you are here in my home state of New York. Let's get into it right away. First, the elephant in the room, guys, weight and mass are not the same. Whatever level you're on, it will be tested to make sure that you know this information. They're confused all of the time. Weight and mass are very different. Guys, weight is a force. It has a unit of newtons. Mass is a scalar, and it has a unit of kilograms. And sometimes we represent this with inertia. Weight changes depending on where you go in the universe. Mass remains the same everywhere in the universe. You, right off the bat, we need to at least establish that we know that, that weight and mass are different. This talk is going to be about the force of weight and how it's different, and the major hiccup that I see is when we use Newton's second law, F equals MA, we don't understand that F equals MA is actually a formula for weight and mass is included in there. And I'm going to show you exactly what I mean. So like I just said, if I look at F equals MA, this is a force, this is a mass, and this is an acceleration. This is Newton's second law and it applies to all forces in every single situation. But an object can have a weight force. It has a symbol of F sub G, and sometimes you'll see W, so I'll just put W. And that equals M little g. So once again, here's weight, here is mass. So if you have a mass, and you are by a gravitational field strength, you will have a weight. And because of this, you can never really be weightless. When you are falling towards the surface of the earth, not drawn to scale, you have a weight. And that weight is equal to m little g. Now, you might, quote, feel weightless, but you can never actually be weightless. If there is another mass around you, which is everywhere in the universe, you cannot be weightless. So, for example, if you have a mass of 50 kilograms, you're a smaller person, and here on Earth we have a gravitational field strength and acceleration due to gravity of 10 meters per second squared, your weight is just going to be 50 times 10 your weight is going to be 500 newtons. Now, if we were on the moon where G is not 10, your weight would change, but your mass would remain the same whether you were here or if you were on the moon. So now, what is little g exactly? Well, we've learned it's the acceleration due to the force of gravity. We know that it has a value of 9.81 meters per second squared, and on the AP level, we call it 10. And we also know that it's also called the gravitational field strength. And students see this strength and they think it's a force. It is not a force. Let me draw a picture of G so you can kind of see. This down here will be Earth, not drawn to scale. Hello, Earth. Okay. Now, inside Earth, we know that there is a gravitational field. And that gravitational field points towards the center. And the strength of that gravitational field, that is G. And G is present all of the time. It does not matter if a mass is inside that field or not. G is an imaginary field strength that goes around the Earth that if another mass comes into it, it's going to say, whoa, you're going to accelerate towards the Earth. So let's throw a mass in there. Here's a mass. Now, if we look, a mass and a little g give that object a weight. So now that a mass is present, there is an Fg, or a weight, towards the center of the Earth. But this case right here, this alteration of Newton's second law, is when I'm on Earth. Or another planet that I know the gravitational field strength. But there's another way to find weight if we're not on Earth, or if we're somewhere else in the universe, or if there's no Earth present. Just maybe two masses that are hanging out by one another. And that's called Newton's Law of Gravitation. And Newton's Law of Gravitation is going to apply for two objects where Earth is not involved. Here is the formula for Newton's Law of Gravitation. 
which is generally given to you on a reference table of some sort. If you're taking the SAT for physics, no reference table. I made a video about all the formulas you need to memorize for that. You can check that video out. I'll leave it in the description. But generally, this will be given to you. It is shown by FG, the force due to gravity, right? Because now it's the same. We're finding the weight or the pull of gravity times capital G, M1, M2, over R squared. And I got to give a shout out to one of my older students, Tori. She asked me in class, what is that little at arrow thing in this formula? And um, I guess you had to be there, but it was hilarious. So what's up, Tori? Shout out to you for thinking that was an arrow thing and not a capital G. So that arrow thing, that capital G, is the universal gravitational constant. Because it has a constant, it has a value that does not change. It is 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11 newtons times meters squared divided by kilogram squared. Yes, I know that's an annoying unit to write. Just because it's annoying doesn't mean you can just not write it. You must write that. M1 is just what it sounds like, mass 1. Because I said this is going to be between two objects. M2 is mass 2. And R is the distance between their centers. And when I say centers, I mean center of mass, obviously. Do not forget to square this. Please, please, please. I beg you. Now, when students look at this, all right, and, and we do this in class, we have to remember that, number one, these objects don't need to necessarily be touching. And the next thing we want to know, they, they get a little intuitive and they say, well, Finn, if FG equals M little g on earth, does that mean that g equals g m of the earth divided by the distance between them? And the answer is, in fact, yes. But then they ask, okay, well, what is this r squared? Well, on earth, the earth has such a huge radius, and I am so very small, this is not drawn a scale, but I can essentially say the distance between our centers is essentially just the radius of the Earth. And you can test this out and you'll see that it's pretty darn close. If you take your mass, to find your mass, you take your weight in pounds and you divide it by 2.2, that's going to give you your mass. So when you step on a scale, you're really finding the force that your foot pushes onto the scale. If you take your mass and you multiply that by 9.2, eight meters per second squared, you'll get an answer in Newtons. So your FG, that is your weight, that's going to be your weight in Newtons. If you did the same exact thing and you plugged in the gravitational constant right here, the mass of the Earth, which you could Google, put in your mass and the radius of the Earth squared that you can also Google, just Google mean radius of the Earth. If you're in my class, that's also all that information given on the reference table. That should be the same to some extent, maybe like 1% to 2% error of that mass, which proves that little g is really the gravitational constant times the mass of the Earth divided by the radius of the Earth squared. FG is going to be used throughout the year, guys. It also comes up in uniform circular motion. We'll talk about it then. It pretty much shows how satellites orbit around the Earth and how it can be used with centripetal force as well. It's also used to explain Kepler's laws of gravitational motion. That's also in uniform circular motion, so we'll see that later. I think the main things that we need to understand is that FG equals MG and G, M1, M2 over R squared are equal, and also... Weight is very, very different than mass. If this video helped clear some things up, guys, give it a thumbs up. Man, I like thumbs up. They make me feel warm and special inside, you know. Give the video a thumbs up. Make it turn blue. I dare you. You won't. You won't do it. Make it, make it, make it turn blue. If you have any other questions about this video or anything about physics related, just leave them in the comments below. I'll get back to you, I promise. I'll catch you on the next one.